Last night's frontline debate was the last television debate involving all seven candidates and it was a crucial and critical debate in the sense that um, Sean Gallagher had forged ahead, surged ahead with a massive lead in opinion polls, 40% compared to 25% for his nearest rival, Michael D. Higgins. So it was quite obvious leading into the uh, debate last night that other candidates would concentrate their efforts and the criticisms on Sean Gallagher. What we witnessed though was a bloodbath. The focus was unrelentingly on Sean Gallagher from the get-go right until the end. And the locus of the attacks came from two relatively unexpected quarters. The first uh, wasn't Michael D. Higgins, who was his main rival, who stayed as usual above the fray and didn't really get involved besides one or two acerbic comments. Uh, the main uh, person who went on the attack was surprisingly Sinn Féin's Martin McGuinness. He cast to aside all pretensions of being a presidential candidate and went for the jugular. And essentially his attack concentrated on a uh, Fianna Fáil fundraiser that was held three years ago. Martin McGuinness said it was held two years ago, but it was held three years ago, in which Sean Gallagher is said to have organised uh, businessmen uh, to uh, attend this dinner and pay amounts up to €5,000 each. Uh, at an early juncture last night, Martin McGuinness said that he had spoken to a businessman not two hours earlier who had said that Sean Gallagher had not only uh, cajoled this man into going along, but had also arrived at his house to uh, collect the cheque. Uh, that was denied by uh, uh, Sean Gallagher. They returned to it later with a tweet that uh, ultimately actually emanated from a false uh, Twitter account, uh, which is uh, a subplot or a sub-story in itself. But that particular tweet suggested that this businessman was going to present himself at a press conference. There was, there was a subplot. This uh, Twitter account was actually a false account and it didn't emanate from Sinn Féin. Uh, and it's suggesting that this businessman would present himself at a press conference was actually false. But it did prompt Sean Gallagher into responding further to it. And it was at, at that moment that he made the critical uh, mistake. He said that, um, that uh, the, the, the businessman might have arrived at his house, or he might have arrived at the businessman's house, he might have provided him with a photograph, and the businessman might have uh, handed him uh, an envelope that he forwarded to Fianna Fáil headquarters. But from an optics and from a semiotics point of view, that was a disaster. The use of the words envelope, uh, the use of the words recollection by him, recalled uh, previous presidential debates in which Brian Lennon Sr. from Fianna Fáil had got into huge uh, difficulty. And suddenly, the truthfulness of Sean Gallagher's account and his credibility suddenly came under serious question. Of course, Martin McGuinness went in for the jugular in a very aggressive way, uh, saying that he was in deep, deep uh, trouble now. It was a nasty exchange. McGuinness didn't come out particularly well from it, but he had damaged Sean Gallagher to a huge extent. The second attack on Sean Gallagher came a little bit later, uh, or had come in between those two attacks, when a businesswoman sitting in the front row called Glenda Lynch uh, questioned him about this 10% or this loan of €89,000 that he had taken from, an account, from, a, from a company that he and himself, himself and his wife had set up. And the essential um, um, element of that was that the loan uh, was much higher than the legally permitted limits that one is allowed when one is taking a loan as a director uh, from a company. Uh, she was very much in command of her facts. It was clear that she wasn't impressed by Sean Gallagher. In fact, the question was quite a hostile one towards him, but he fudged and he floundered when he was trying to answer the question. There's an old adage, not quite an old adage, by Karl Rove, that when you're explaining, you are losing. It didn't really apply here because he was explaining, um, but his difficulty was that he wasn't explaining enough and there was no clarity. Uh, he he uh, wasn't transparent and uh, the, the uh, answer posed more questions uh, than resolutions and that was very unfortunate uh, indeed and for the rest of the night Gallagher was on the back foot and even for the most pedestrian questions he seemed to be answering them in a very vacuous way. As for the other candidates Higgins didn't get involved he has sailed through the campaign without really being tested and maybe there's nothing to test him on but he hasn't been tested in the same way that Gallagher has been tested on and he would be the major he is he has been the major beneficiary the question is was there enough done last night to close the gap? The gap is still a big gap. I think it will close uh, fractionally in the last few days of the campaign. But I think where Higgins will really benefit is that he will benefit from transfers coming from other candidates that might just close the gap between himself and Sean Gallagher. Presidential elections by their very nature are different uh, from other elections in that they are very personality based, not based on issues. And the electorate can be 
very, very um, uh, um, uh, uh, volatile, uh, can be a little bit fickle in terms of changing um, allegiances. Of the other candidates, I thought Dana was peripheral. She accounted for herself well, but she was relatively quiet. Uh, Mary Davis uh, seemed much more at ease with herself than in previous election de debates, but really didn't get engaged in any issue and didn't really come out with any strong argument other than calling for more transparency from Sean Gallagher. I thought David Norris was magnificent. I think he know, knows he can't win it. He was humorous. Uh, he, uh, he, he made some very, very funny interjections and essentially he came out of it very well. And I might add a couple of percentage point, points to his total. Gay Mitchell, very aggressive, street fighter, kind of showed him as, as, as at his strengths when he started tackling Pat Kenny in a slightly hostile and kind of um, a bitter way. Uh, it showed why he's so good in some senses, but not good for the presidential election. Good for being a TD, good for being a partisan MEP, good for being a street fighting Fine Gael TD, but not as presidential material. Choosing Gage Mitchell by Fine Gael was a monumental strategic cock up. Uh, McGuinness, very strong, again, showed why he was completely unsuitable for the job. Very, very aggressive in the way that he comported himself last night, and a bit scary too. Uh, if I may say so, and um, I think I've covered most of the candidates at that stage. We've only three days left. Uh, the opinion polls at the weekend were completely uh, uh, swayed towards uh, Sean Gallagher, saying that this guy was a sure thing to win. Um, not anymore. I think he, he has been damaged uh, a lot. Um, he may prove that he didn't hand over, uh, or he didn't collect the money, but a little bit like Royston Brady in 2004 with the story about his dad being abducted and put into the Dublin mountains. The truth of that, if it does emerge, would come, might come a little bit too uh, late for him. And um, if you look back at 1990, uh, Brian Lenehan was ahead until uh, his mature recollection moment and he went behind and he never recovered after that and he went behind very quickly indeed. And at this moment in time, I suspect that the momentum is shifting towards Michael D. Higgins. The big question, the imponderable is, has it shifted enough to uh, remove uh, the prize from Sean Gallagher?